Hey everyone, it's Clint again. This time around, we're going to be installing a very simple OpenZD overlay network. We're going to start by following one of the quick starts to deploy OpenZD anywhere on a pre-installed Amazon machine, which I've already created. So that's been done ahead of time, but that's it. I can just log into it. And on that, we're going to run the quick start. We're going to install the controller, the ZD router, and once we're done with that, we'll run a few ZD CLI commands. Those commands are going to configure the network. It's going to create an identity for my local Windows 10 machine. You can see I'm going to have two identities. First identity will be for my ZD desktop edge for Windows. The second identity will be for the Ubuntu virtual machine, which is going to be running the NetFoundry tunneler. And uh, let's just go right ahead and, and get right into it and see what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is switch over to the quick start. I'm going to host it myself. So you can see I'm just going to follow along with the quick start. <coughs> first thing I'm going to have to do is SSH to the environment. So let's go ahead and SSH to CD AWS, which is the name of that environment. Here I am. It's a it's a micro, so it's a little bit slow, but you'll forgive it if it's slow. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to follow that quick start and just start doing um, the steps that are required. I have already opened a couple of holes in the security group, so port 8441, port 8442 are both already opened. That is to allow edge connections and to allow the REST API access. So let's go ahead and set up. We're going to to the external DNS and for this I'm going to go and copy the actual external DNS name from Amazon so there's my external DNS name uh, ooh, let's not forget I do need to update apt install this does take a little bit of time so we'll let that go about and do its thing we need we do want jQuery now I'm going to find the external IP address I'm, I'm going to use eth0.me which is a nice way of getting your external IP address. I'm going to then use that external IP or the external DNS to set a bunch of environment variables, including hostname, ports, etc. And we're going to run the quick start express install. So we're going to do all of this by one great big copy and paste. Do that. And apt is almost complete. Uh, after that is complete, we'll be able to run our command. And then I'll be able to set up system D and keep following the quick start. So let's just wait for apt. It's like waiting for paint to dry. I should have done this ahead of time. Okay. Looks like it'll be ready any moment now. It is. Let's go ahead and paste that commands that we just talked about. See the little express install choo choo train. It'll go out. It'll download the latest version of OpenZD for you. It'll set up your whole PKI. We'll also set up a relatively complicated PKI, one that you can use to explore. Three different root CAs are created, the controller CA, the edge controller CA, the signing CA. Um, you don't need to worry about any of those things. The quick start handles all of this for you. At the end of that, what we'll have is we'll have our ZD router and a controller, not pictured here, but that ZD router will be running out on the internet and available for ZD edge connections. Uh, we'll just wait for it to complete. Waiting for the controller to come online, adding a public attribute. You can read about attributes on the documentation pages. Creating the roller, enrolling the router, and enrolling the router. Let's go ahead and do these commands now. We're going to create the systemd file for both the router and for the controller. Okay, those have been written to. And now we're going to copy those systemd files into the correct places, reload the daemon, and then start them both up. Let's do all that now. And when we're done, we should be able to run these simple uh, system control statuses to find out whether the router and the controller are running. At this point, we're good to go. We have our environment running. We should be able to now issue ZD login. And we can see that we were able to log in. ZD login is a function provided by the shell script, which you have uh, downloaded, but it's also uh, available for you in your 
env file if you source that env file you can read more about that on the pages that's not the important bits all right so we've already set up our entire network now what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of identities so let's go ahead and create the first identity and we'll call this one um, windows web oops i'm not typing on the right screen windows web so let's go ahead and, and make windows web oops zd command is not found uh, zd home no no zd uh, binder binder zd yeah uh, all right so now we're going to do zd binder zd edge create identity user windows web Okay, so there we have a new Windows web. And now let's make a new uh, Ubu VM identity while we're here. And with the same problem, dollar CT bin there. Okay, so now we have our Ubu VM and our Windows web. Let's go ahead and SCP. Actually, I'm gonna change to my temp directory. I am, uh, to, as a reminder, I am on Windows, so I run Windows. In fact, it's not Windows 10, it's Windows 11, but you get the gist. I do run Windows subsystem for Linux, and I will have a virtual machine running. But for starters, I need to enroll this identity in my ZD desktop edge for Windows, which is over here. So let's go ahead and grab that file. Uh, SCP, uh, Windows Web, actually CD AWS, Windows Web, which is here. I uh, did not call it that. What did I call it? Windowsweb.jwt. Okay. Now I can go over to add identity, temp windowsweb.jwt, and you'll see I have an identity added to my local tunneler. Oh, I also did not show the installation of the local Windows tunneler. Um, but now I have a client installed. So let's go ahead and now flip over to the virtual machine. In the virtual machine, uh, you can see I can also SSH or SCP uh, Ubu VM JWT from CD AWS to the local machine. Uh, I'm going to run these two commands. One in the top window will show you a ZD tunneler running in host mode. In the bottom window will show you a very simple sample web app you can find via Docker. I'm going to use Docker to run them both. Um, so to, to go back and revisit the diagram, you'll see that a tunneler will be running, which provides you access to the overlay network, the tunneling. And then there will be a simple web container uh, running that will provide a, a simple curl statement. And I'll show you that running. So let's go ahead and run that hello world. Oh, I did not make the network. Uh, you do need to make, you do need to create a network in this example. Um, and we're doing that just so that it's easy to have um, named addresses so that when I paste the commands, it'll make sense. You'll see that in a second. Okay, so now that command has run, that Docker container is started. If I were to curl to HTTP local host port 8000, remember this is inside of uh, virtual machine, inside of Windows. You can see port 8000 is not listening. Uh, if I were to docker exec into that machine and run sh, uh, you'll see I, now I can, it, it comes with wget. So we'll run wget into the curl local host 8000. You see that it did say something index.html save. So if I cat out index.html, you'll see that it's just the docker whale. All right, so fantastic. So now we have a simple web app running inside of Docker and now uh, inside of a Docker network, a known Docker network, which is important because now we're going to provide access to that Docker network using the ZD Edge tunnel. So let's go ahead. We, we have our JWT uh, Ubu, Ubu VM.JWT. So we have that here. So now we're going to make it. Um, I've followed the directions on the Docker pay, uh, the, the Docker readme for this bit. I'm going to make a directory. Um, I'm going to call this uh, home directory.zd IDs. 
Okay, so we'll give it a minus P so that it makes the directory. Now we'll move ubuvm into this directory. No. All right, so that's all done. Now, when I run uh, the volume mapping up here, you'll see that it should work. So let's go ahead and run that. You can see it found it and it's running and there are no, well, there's one error that's not relevant, but it is still running. So now we have a ZD Edge tunnel running inside of our Docker environment, providing access into that Docker network. Uh, so if I were to, uh, in fact, I don't have curl or, or wget on this machine. So we'll just have to go ahead and add ZD. So let's go ahead and add ZD now. We'll SSH to CD AWS. We'll log in to make sure that we're logged in. Uh, let's see. So now I have to. Now I gotta source this file. This time I'm not going to run dev uh, express install. So I should log in. I have to source $ZD. Home. No, it's going to be in uh, dot zd quick start quick pip dot n. There we go. Now zd login should work. Excellent. So there's zd login working. Okay, great. Uh, and if you wanted to uh, follow that along when you install the quick start, there will be a file that is located at at uh, dollar home slash quick start slash host name host name dot n uh, no such file that is that is what I would expect let's make sure that's the right location hmm oh it's got a dot env in it I've got too many envs Directory, quick start. Oh, it's not ZD. That's what I screwed up. Okay, great. Let's change that. And it'll be dot ZD quick start. Live debugging. There we go. That's what we should have seen. Okay, great. Well, that detour is now over. Let's do two things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create this line right here, which is the dialing line. So this is the line. Actually, it goes all the way back to Vash, or in this case, we're going to run a command prompt. This allows you to dial the service, and then we'll do this line as well, which is the binding of the service. And what that will do is it will allow this container to serve as the offload point for the traffic to Hello World. And that's what the bind will do. The dial will allow us to access that service. So let's go ahead and make two configurations first. Um, the first configuration, let's make this smaller so you can see it. <clears throat> ZD Edge create config sample web app host v1 host dot v1 and then uh, I have some JSON over here I'm just gonna grab and paste it because this is the uh, the correct JSON you can see it specifies the protocol TCP the address sample web app that's where the traffic will offload from the OpenZD overlay network, and then on port 8000. And then we'll do the same thing again. Uh, in this case, we're not going to create a host v1. We'll create an intercept v1. And that uh, JSON's going to be different. <coughs> Let's copy that too, because I don't uh, want to type it. Uh, also specifies the protocol, TCP, the address. This is the intercept address. This is what I'll curl to, samplewebapp.zd. Notice that .zd is not a valid top-level domain. And then what port ranges you want to use, 8,000 and 8,000. Cool, so now we have two configurations created. Now we'll make a service that, conf that uh, basically knits these configs together. CD Edge, create service, sample web app. Configs, oops, sample, web app, intercept, 
if you want. Let's sample web app and no, this will be host v1. All right, and now we will make a couple of bind policies. Let's see the edge create service policy sample web app binding. This will be the bind policy. Service roles will grant the sample web app is the one that we're going to be granting bind policy on. Identity roles will be Ubu VM. This is the one that we want to be able to bind, so we want the virtual machine to bind it. And then we will do the same thing, but this will be dialing. Dial, oh, in case you didn't notice, this thing ticked up here. And it has determined that it has a service available. We want this to be the same uh, exact thing, except instead of Ubu VM, this is going to be Windows Web. Now, uh, if I go back and I look at my Windows Web, about 10 seconds, it'll get a new identity, sorry, a new service available. You can see the service is sample-web-app.zd on port 8000. And so now, if I were to make a new command window, look over here, oops, I've already done it, let's clear. Uh, let's go ahead and do that curl now to HTTP sample web app port 8000. And you can see I have the Docker whale, which is what we saw before, but I don't need to use curl, of course. I can just grab this and go to my web browser and do it in my web browser. You can see I get the same thing. And just to prove that it is actually running here inside the container, if I shut down the uh, ZD Edge tunnel, you know, let's just Docker kill it. Docker kill ZD Edge tunnel, it's a little bit faster. Then when I come back here and I refresh this, you'll see it is not working. And if I put it back again, and refresh, hmm, it's not working. Let's see if it's ready. Is it ready? Let's do that curl and make sure. There's the response. Perfect. There it is. Uh, let's do it one more time. Let's do the curl one more time. You see it all working. And that is a really quick demo on how to get started with a host it yourself virtual private server, hiding a web server wherever you want, or any kind of application. It does not have to be a web server, it could be Postgres, it could be SSH, it could be whatever you want. And that's all for now, and uh, thanks for watching.